Ladies and gentlemen, when you understand this about the supernatural, it will help your faith. You are interrupting spirituality with science. You are interrupting spirituality with excessive, exaggerated intellectualism. Is the reason why it must make sense before you believe. Unfortunately, that's not how the realm of the spirit works. Is the reason why people who are not not so enlightened seem to receive the miraculous faster because the frame of their reasoning is fragile enough for the Holy Spirit to override. Sometimes intelligence can be a blockade. It's the reason why the scribes and the Pharisees had it. It was, it was difficult for them to believe. But the woman with the issue of blood, not after that pain. She reached out, if I may, but touch his garment. That's the end of it. How the power flows. I don't need to study what are the five conductors of the anointing. I will study them, but in the midst of my pain now, all I need is for the power to flow. Hallelujah. So many of us have come now and you came here with bills. You are in debt, say for instance, or you are having some kind of court cases. And whilst you are sitting down, the frame of your thinking, okay, God, I know you will do this, but can you at least prove to me? Let a rich man sit down near me. At least that's a first logical sign and God says nonsense. You don't know who you are talking to. You are not talking to a carpenter. You are not talking to a professor. You are talking to the creator of the ends of the earth. Hold on. If you were with God in Genesis chapter 1 and he asks you, suggest how I should create the heavens and the earth, what would be your, your initiative? Intelligently tell me how, the, how you would have advised God to create the heavens and the earth, to make matter from nothing. Hallelujah. If you stood before the Red Sea and God said, come and partner with me, suggest how these people will pass. How long will it take you to build a bridge across the Red Sea? Are we together? If you were in that crusade where there were about 5,000 people aside women and children, hungry and angry. Imagine children tapping their parents, mommy, we are hungry, and saying it close to Jesus. And he said, please help me. What do we do now? How many bakers will you gather together? How many professional chefs will you gather together and say, you know what? Can you cook for 5,000 people within 30 minutes? Not Jesus. He said, you just get me five loaf, two, two fish. There is something I can place on it. Now, that is not, listen, that is not to ignore the ministry of these people. There is a place for process. There is a natural sequence of things. But ladies and gentlemen, I said it is the supernatural. The supernatural is an advantage that God gives a believer. Hallelujah. So how does pain, some swelling somewhere, you are holding your medical report and now they are saying there is no hope. You are going to die. The doctors are sincere, practicing as far as they have been taught. Everything on earth has a name. Is how God designed the system. A name is a means of identification. A name is also a representation of how powerful or otherwise a thing is. So when you say professor, you are given a name that is a representation of years of laborious study and, and a, a pragmatic search along a field. Are we together? When you say doctor, you mean one who has passed through the medical school. When you say an engineer, when you say an architect, you mean one who has trained his mindset and, and primed his creativity to bring forth innovative designs. When you say Jesus, what do you think? For some of you, Jesus means a weak Galilean that history tells us that he just healed the sick and we're not even sure if he does so. Can you imagine when your loved one is sick and someone just arrives and they say he's a consultant, just by the mention of that name, it ministers hope. It means hope has come. It means this guy and they tell you that this guy is one of the foremost professors in Harvard or Yale or John Hopkins Hospital and you are encouraged because you believe that there is a greater level of accuracy and expertise. I ask you a question again. When you say Jesus, what comes to your mind? When you say Jesus, what comes to your mind? 
For many of you, Jesus means that mysterious person whose ways I do not understand. And I'm not even sure if he's that powerful. In fact, for some of us, you are more confident hearing Paul than Jesus, Peter than Jesus. I announce to you that there is only one name that has been vested with all authority and dominion. Hallelujah. Listen, do not give God a template he must use before you believe. That is unbelief. Lord, I want you to lift me. But please, can you use this man to lift me? That is unbelief. The economy of heaven does not work that way. There are about 8 billion actors that God can use. Anyone can be used by God for your rising. Your uncle says, no, there must be someone saying yes somewhere. The challenge is that our faith is auxiliary faith. It is not absolute faith. You are saying faith, but at the back of your mind, you are hoping that faith is connected to somebody or something. I can tell you instances in my life where God said he would do many things and it did not make sense. I have mastered the art of being faithful in my area of the faith equation while not bothering myself with the area that is none of my business. And it shall come to pass that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to obey, to do and observe all that I command you this day, that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth, and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. How they will come is none of my business. All I know is that if I obey him in walking in keeping, you will marvel and wonder at the creativity of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? I'm saying that because I need to put your faith in place so that when we begin to pray, you look beyond the pain. The pain is real. I'm not denying it. It is there. The sickness is there. But can you look on? There were serpents on the ground. But Moses said there are two kinds of serpents you can look at. The one lifted by instruction or the one coming to you. That if you can look at the brazen altar, the brazen serpent, you will leave. There are two names you can look at. The one you are holding as a medical report or the one exalted as Lord and Christ. There are two names you can look at. Unemployment as a name or the provider as Jaira. There are two names you can look at. Untimely death or the resurrection and the life. There are always many names and you are at liberty to turn whatever direction except that where your face turns is where your life turns to. They looked unto him and the Bible says their faces were lightened. Lot's wife was mandated to not look back. But the Bible says while she was going, I don't know what it is about Sodom that caught her attention. She turned and even in the midst of great deliverance, she stood there. Her own was not delay, was not retrogression, was not stagnation. She became salt, a pillar, a monument, a warning that if any man draws back, my soul will find no pleasure in him. And the Bible makes reference to her tragedy. It says, remember Lord's wife. You are not the first to need a job. No, you are not the first to be diagnosed with a challenging situation. My Bible says, listen, that the thing that is, is the thing that was, and the thing that is to happen. There is nothing new under the sun. The Bible is full of men who survived what you are going through, that by reading their story to be a consolation to you, are we together? That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. You are not the first to start having a bone condition, an ear condition, a neck pain. No. Apostle, but men have prayed and prayed for me. Why don't you release your faith tonight and look unto Jesus? Did the Bible not say about the woman with the issue of blood that she spent all her earnings on doctors and physicians? She was not an irresponsible woman. She made efforts before that time to meet people but the solution it was not a permanent solution not until Jesus came not until Jesus came ladies and gentlemen a miracle service is beyond a healing service a healing is a major part of it but God is concerned about every aspect of your life including the housing issue including the finance issue did you hear what I said including that issue that has brought shame and reproach 
This is God for you. So that when it's time to release your faith, don't stand to be a spectator and say, well, Lord, I know that you will touch me. No, you have to be an active participant to walk with the Holy Spirit. Don't waste the time that you, you have spent time to come. Many of you have been here since morning waiting, releasing your faith. Now is the time. Insist and ensure that I will not go back the same. And for those who are connecting online, I've taught you that distance is no barrier. That every spirit that is troubling you must leave. And every condition that is in partnership with any spirit mocking God in your life, it's time to insist it must go. You are a man of God and you have come here because of there are certain deficiencies of results you've seen in your life and your ministry. It's time to obtain grace. Genuine grace that empowers you to go back and produce results. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. But my emphasis tonight, I, and, and I began to sense this very strongly as I prayed, is God really, really wants to step in to bring healing miracles. Healing miracles. The, the spread of sicknesses and diseases, mysterious occurrences, eating up people's bodies. You see someone alive and strong standing, but something is dying within him. Heart dying, liver dying, kidney dying, brain dying. What a devil. How does it transport itself from anywhere until it finds itself in your brain? Then it latches there and starts growing. Yet we call them unicellular. What gave them the intelligence to know that that is your brain? That is your heart? That is this and that? Hallelujah. That all the pain you are going, don't wait until you are, they diagnose it and say, this is finally this. If it is discomforting you, that devil must leave this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. How about those who have all kinds of dreams, activities of familiar spirits, masquerading as loved ones that you have seen. Help those under the anointing. I'm angry in my spirit, oh, let me tell you. And that, that anger in partnership with the anointing is about to be unleashed in this place. There is a holy anger that is necessary for certain levels of breakthrough. When you love God's people and you see them under oppression, except you are, you are also satanic, you should not be smiling. Hallelujah. There are some of you that all your earnings have finished in drugs, or treatments you see it's another dimension of the manifestation of the devourer because when your health is disturbed no amount becomes too much to keep your life and 10 million naira can finish in one month because of a devil masquerading in your body so it's not only healing you are going to receive there must be restoration do you believe that restoration 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 now there are those who are not sick in terms of infirmity but they are diseased they lie down and they cannot sleep the trouble that is on you is heavier than the bed you are lying down on and it's as if the bed is on you you wake up tired more tired than you because there's trouble there's school fees your children are abroad you are thinking of taking care of them the ones here all kinds of trouble maybe the rates housing has increased no, a miracle service is a convergence where God brings his people and allows them to collide with his transforming power, with his miracle working power. There is a consolation to the believer's Christian experience that God can arise and he can visit men and with visitations come redemption. Hallelujah. Gentlemen, I announce to you that this is a miracle service where God will raise you from the dust of shame. Finally, in the name of Jesus Christ, raise you from the dust of shame and decorate your life like Pharaoh did that of Joseph. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. Hallelujah. I hope you know that the garment, shame and despair can be worn like a garment. Is it in your Bible? That a man can wear it the same way I cannot look at someone dressed on suit and say you are wearing traditionals. No. A man can wear the garment of shame and walk with it. 
Walk with it to your place of work. Walk with it to, and several people who should help you just ignore you. You don't know what they are seeing. They don't know what they are seeing, but the results of rejection is clear. Can I tell you, psychologists teach us that rejection is the worst thing that can happen to a man from a psychological standpoint. To be rejected means to be given a clear message that you are not needed within a system. You are not needed within your workplace. That is, that is where people try to pretend so that they belong. But there's something God can place on your head. That when he places it on your head, even from the prison, the king can send for you and bring you out of any dungeon. I hope you believe what I'm telling you. Listen, let me say this one last, one last encouragement and then we'll pray. Always be conscious of the fact that spiritual forces have dominion and exact dominion over the physical. Men, even science has agreed with religion and spirituality that no man walks alone. You see a man alone, but there are forces we carry. Is that true? A man can walk alone. If you met the madman in Gadara and he came and met you and just shook your hand, you would believe you were shaking one man, not knowing you were shaking a legion. The same way you can see one man and believe you are shaking one man, you just, you will know that you shook hand with speed, you shook hand with favor, you shook hand with breakthrough, you shook hand with elevation. It is true. Graces are trapped in men. It is your responsibility tonight to scan through your life and see what is not working and pray and insist that in the name of Jesus it must begin to work. This is why I came here. Lord, I'm tired of this shame and reproach over my family, my loved ones. Why is it that good things keep happening on, until we show up and then the narrative just changes? There is a way out. I don't know what the way is, but I know there is a way out. And then you engage by faith. Are you ready to pray? We'll take two or three minutes to pray. I want you to release your faith sincerely. God brought us to this miracle service to see to it that we return with strange manifestations of his power. Lift your voice in one minute everywhere. Whether you are outside, whether you are inside, all the overflows, go ahead and begin to pray. Indeed, it is my night. God is giving me a story. Shalika parakos sobrande kebeleketash keprate kabareka skote beleketa manta prakete beleketos katiba la sandabash. This disease, this infirmity, is living finally. Someone pray. This embargo of shame and reproach, backwardness, retrogression, is giving way in the name of Jesus. Take a minute to release your faith. It's time for gates to be opened. It's time for doors to be opened. Time for new chapters to be opened. Make sure you are praying, engage by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you one more prayer point. If you are not interested, don't pray it. You can pray the rest. You are going to declare that every spirit that keeps me or anybody around me poor and limited begging and in servitude in the name of Jesus I curse it by the spirit open your mouth and pray pray with understanding pray with understanding pray with understanding pray with understanding many things in our lives are connected to our economic empowerment many things in our lives will make progress when economic empowerment is at work in us open your mouth and pray
Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Hear me. Tonight, there are three things I want you to fight by faith. Number one is sickness and any kind of bodily limitation. Number two, smallness in life and destiny. This is, you know the purpose of influence. So I'm not afraid to teach you and release grace upon you. For as long as you remain small, you will be weak and there are many things you will not be able to do for the kingdom. Smallness is a curse. Let me tell you straight to the point. Do not let anything and anyone massage you into believing that a life of smallness is a blessing. There is greatness without vision. That is also a foolish template for living. But in the presence of vision and understanding, there is no limit to what greatness and influence can do in your life. And then number three, poverty. Do you know that many things in your life will be impeded when you are economically handicapped? That is the truth.